Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it's been a while. KBW Podcast is back, though. I'm the assassin, AK-47, and I am who I am, and I am different from everybody else. I miss you guys, and I miss these guys on the screen right now. Introduce yourselves. It's great to be back, fellas, guys, all listeners. It's the biggest and baddest here, Bulldozer. And I am the best at what I do, Mr. Better Than You, K-A-G-E, Cage, also known as Professional Wrestler, World Traveler, Fuego Del Sol. And you are watching the KBW Podcast every single week, not every Night week, week. <laughs> I should tell you, you know, we have, we have some issues, a lot of weeks in a row, you're going to get reacts and podcasts coming from the KBW channel, talking about our favorite memories, matches, moments from our long tenured career in KBW. And you can support us and maybe support a reunion show coming up towards the end of the year. We're raising money all year long through this KBW membership to get a reunion show started. So from as little as $1 a month all the way up to $20 a month, and there's $5 tier and a $10 tier in between, you can get the podcast early, react videos early, a brand new, never before seen KBW video every month uh, and more at the KBW membership. Check it out in the description below. All the support, like I said, goes to us. We're saving up money in the end of a big pot to try to get all the KBW guys back together at the end of the year for a reunion show. Speaking of reunions and what KBW meant to us, we want to hear from you guys about what KBW meant to you. We want you guys to send in videos to us. Just a little one to two minute video saying how you got into KBW, uh, when you started watching KBW, why you love KBW, what's your favorite memories from KBW. We want to know what KBW meant to you. I travel the world and I meet so many people that say they watched KBW, they loved KBW. I want to hear it. We're going to watch them and react to these videos live on the podcast next week and we're going to kind of reminisce and just be thankful for the community that we've built over the past 10 years. Uh, you can, if you're part of our KBW Discord, you can upload the videos in the Discord and there will also be a public uh, Google Drive in the description below. You click on the Google Drive, you hit upload, you can upload it on your camera, phone, or and just upload it straight from your mobile device onto the Google Drive. And we will play them on the podcast next week and we react to them live and maybe even have a special guest joining us. So we'll see how that all goes. Are you guys excited for that next week? Super excited. I mean, um, if you're in the Discord, you know I announced it before Fuego left for his Europe trip that we plan on doing it. Uh, we changed it up this week. We want to talk about something different, give people a little more time to upload videos. And I think I said 30 seconds in the Discord. So if anybody's listening and you want to redo a video, make it maybe a minute or something. It's fine. And I'm excited to see the reaction. Absolutely. And this I got to give all credit to Dozer here. This was his idea. You know, uh, I want to, you know, shout out Dozer. He's like, hey, man, we should hear from the fans. We should hear from all these people that love KBW so much. And I thought it was a phenomenal idea. And so that's why we're doing it. So Discord or the Google Drive in the link in the description below. Hit upload uh, and let us know when you do it. And we can't wait to watch all of that next week. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're getting into it, boys, but I just need to talk to uh, Fuego real quick because there is a big reason why we haven't done the podcast and uh, about, what, oh, it feels like a month now that uh, Fuego was in Europe, man. How was the Europe trip? Yeah, man, first time ever crossing the uh, the Atlantic, brother. I can't believe how fun it was. Uh, 17 days I was going to London. I was based in London. I wrestled in Wales. I wrestled all around England. You know, got to see a little bit of Europe. It was a blast. It was incredible. First time going over there. And, you know, I knew it was going to take away from the podcast. So that's why we pre-recorded a bunch of React videos. We re-uploaded Royal Rumble 1. We uploaded the Never Before Seen match for uh, last month. Um, or this month, I should say. Uh, and we, you know, tried to put out as much content as I possibly could the time zones and scheduling differences was messing me up. So some days I posted a little bit later than I normally would want it to make some of these videos public, but we managed to get them all out except for one video, a react video that we, I edited it, but it did not fully upload to the channel. So it'll go up this week as well. And I'm really excited about that, but man, 
talk about getting to wrestle in another country, be around different cultures, meeting all these people. AK, you know, you've yep. been to Ireland multiple times and traveled around Europe a bunch. Same. But I got to go as a wrestler and get to meet people and do things wrestling related. Yep. And that was very, very fun and different. It was almost like a, a paid vacation to go over there and work. And I loved it. I loved every single I got a, a ton of questions for you. I actually been holding off texting you or asking you, you know. Because like you said, AK, been to Europe several times. This man's a super world traveler now. I went to Paris last year. I've been to Asia. But it was exciting when you told us, you know, you were going first time. So first question, and I'll keep it wrestling related. What was your favorite match while you were over there? Oh, man. Okay, so I I want to shout out all the matches I had because they were all so Boo, fun. cop out. <laughs> As I know, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Don't you boo me. Okay, okay. Take back your boos, you <laughs> SOB. Um, oh, man. I. This is what I liked about the trips because I had a bunch of different matches, okay? So the first night over there, I wrestled in Wales against this guy from Ireland. His name's Jay Steins. Mm -hmm. Really good dude. He's like, he's grinding, bro. He's paying for his own trips all around Europe. He's wrestled in Belgium, Denmark, Germany, uh, Finland, uh, all of these countries around, like Spain, uh, Italy. He's wrestled all of, and he's flying himself to these countries. And he, he really pushed to get this match with me. And so it was my first match over there, and we started off great. He was a real uh, Irish heel, but he claims to be from the streets of Compton. He comes out to... <laughs> Straight out of Compton. <laughs> he wears like red, but he's a clearly a white Irish guy and it's hilarious. <laughs> right? And we had a really banger of a match. I thought it was the perfect way to start the tour in Wales. Then the next day, I wrestled these two guys in a tag match called the Brothers of All. Like the Brothers of Awesome. The Brothers of All. Right? Two English guys. This match was so fun. Right? We did it at a Coyote Ugly Bar. Mm. Right? So. Uh, we had free reign to do whatever we wanted. I got into the bartender's ear before the match and be like, hey, if I come over to you, I'm going to need that goddamn water gun. <laughs> right? And so these guys are hilarious together, right? They even put made a viral clip where like they were filming and they were like, Sammy Guevara, is this your boy? We're beating him up in the whales. And then like they climbed up on the top rope. I jumped up there with them. We look at the camera. We look back at each other. I give him a Spanish fly as he's holding the phone in his hand, mm -hmm. right? But like, we brawled on the floor to the outside. We brawled, brawled around the bar. I took one guy, threw him up on the bar. I got some water. I was drowning him with the water. Then I got the water in my mouth. Then I spit the water out like Triple H. Then these two bartender girls were so into it, they took the water guns and they start spraying down my opponent. Just hosing this dude, like completely soaked. Like he's swimming on the bar. Like, oh my God, hilarious, right? Fucking me and my tag partner, a young kid named Augie Knight, super young guy, awesome kid. We do double moonsaults off the bar. Fucking go back into the ring, mm -hmm. do a couple more tag moves together. We did double DDTs, one, two, three. It, it was a dumb match. It was so silly, so goofy, but it was so extremely fun and entertaining, bro. It was so... I didn't think these freaking Coyote Ugly Girls were going to get into it as much as they did. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Right? And it was like, we really just BSed around. They were great heels. Me and my guy were great, easy going baby faces. And it was awesome. Like, it only went like 10 to 12 minutes. We got a viral clip out of it. We got to do the bar stuff. It was just a blast. I maybe took one bump in that whole match. <laughs> but it was awesome. So, that one stands out just being so fun. Also, I know this is, goes behind the curtain. These two guys, the brothers all, they come over to the U.S. all the time. They're freaking, they U.S. sports fans. They love... American football and stuff too. So we just hit it off immediately. We became best friends that night. I had more fun talking to them in the back than we had to having the match. And it was my second night there. So it was like making these guys as my friends and we having such a fun moment, made a viral clip and stuff. It was awesome. So like that one stands out tremendously, yeah. right? But then the following week, I go up to Norwich, England, which is like north, uh, Northeast England. Mm -hmm. And I wrestled this guy from France. 
you know, and he's a young kid from France. He barely speaks any English. Uh, fuego, uh, maybe we do this off the ropes. Uh, 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 we, 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 yes. Uh, stuff like that. So it's like, we're like putting the match together with broken English. And we fucking kill it. I'm talking 450 splash, spiral tap, dives to the floor. Like, it was insane. Maybe the best... Like move for move match because we were both baby faces that I had there. Nice. Um, and he was a French dude, and it was at and, and for people that don't know, this was for Paige's family, Soraya, the one from Fighting with My Family, the movie. This is their company. Nice. So, yeah, Soraya's family in Norwich, England, Paige, uh, from the WWE. Nice. Uh, so I wrestled for her families, and it was awesome. And so, but then we get to the big company, Rev Pro. Yep. Rev Pro, the biggest company in. In all of London, maybe in all of Europe, they have partnerships with CMLL in Mexico. They have partnerships with New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, and they had a, they've had a bunch of AEW guys show up there as well, right? Um, I did a fatal four way with um, Robbie X, who is like a longtime veteran over there. They call him the King of the Cruiserweights over there. He's really freaking good. A young kid named Will Caven, who kind of just bust on the scene over there, mm-hmm. real heel. And then the Leon Slater. Leon Slater works for TNA right now. He's only 19 years old. He got he went viral for being able to do a swanton into a 450 splash. So he poses oh, yeah, for a second that. like a swanton. Then he does a 450 splash. And it's incredible. He's 19 years old. Right before the match, Will Caven, new on the scene. Leon Slater, new on the scene. Pull me aside. Bro, we used to watch KBW. <laughs> it was awesome. Right, I'm about to be in this crazy four-way for the best company in London with these two crazy high flyers and this one good heel, and we murder it. I'm talking, we steal the freaking show, dog. Flips, dives, spots, DDTs, tombstones. It was crazy, right? And it was like, I got to the show late, so we had to put the match together quick, right? And the owner of that company also does commentary for them. And he pulls me aside afterwards. He's like, listen, I'm going to be very honest with you, right? We tried to bring you over last year because Lance Archer put in a word for you, but I only knew you from AEW. And I just want to say, you're incredible. I did not know how good you were. Mm -hmm. I don't know how AEW didn't use you properly. Like, it seems like it would be an easy home run to book you as a baby face. Great validation. They fumbled, right? And he was like, and, like, I, I had another show with him. The next weekend was a singles match. And, like, I was like, brother, if you think the four-way was good, just wait till you see me one-on-one, dog. <laughs> and these were two, like, just smaller shows that do. They do some giant Rev Pro shows, like, in York Hall and, like, bigger venues. And he's like, I would love to bring you back or schedule your next trip around one of those mm. so I can come back and do, like, a bigger show for your call over there. And... Uh, then the following week I did a show in Preston, England. No, it was, so the company's for called Preston Championship Wrestling, but we actually did it in Blackpool where William Regal's from. Mm. And it was a pride event. So it was like during a whole pride parade day or whatever. And it was very funny because like the guy I wrestled is a former WWE superstar. He used to be in WWE UK. He's a UK superstar named Sam Gradwell. Uh, and we wrestled on a fully pride show where everyone was LGBTQ except for us. And so, like, we were like the special attraction straight match <laughs> yeah. on an all LGBTQ show. <laughs> so it was very funny. But, like, we had a really, it was like, we knew what the show was. We didn't try to go out there and murder each other. But, like, for, like, 12 minutes, it was so solid. It could have been a TV match anywhere in the world. You could put that on AEW TV. You could put that on WWE TV. You put that on TNA. Like, it was that fluid. We had instant chemistry. It was like two ultimate professionals stepping in the ring with each other. I'm like, Sam Gradwell is the man, bro. I really enjoy wrestling him. You know, I'm, it sucks that he's not with WWE anymore, but it was cool to wrestle him and, like, get to know him a little bit. And then the final match was at Rev Pro. It was one-on-one against Will Caverin. Will Caverin, one of the guys that was in the four-way the week before, one of the guys that grew up watching a, uh, KBW. And, like, afterwards, again, he was, like, so nice. He was like, bro, I can't believe this, bro. I can't believe you're here. I can't believe I'm wrestling a guy that I used to grow up watching in KBW. He's like, I used to love AK-47. <laughs> he's like, and, and like, uh, it's like all of this, bro. It is... And so we, and like on that day, I hit the big giant moon salt DDT. I did, I went wild in that one as well. But again, 
I don't know. I, I love that brothers all tag match when I'm flipping off the bar. I love the four way at Rev Pro. I love the one on one with the Frenchman. I love the one with Sam Gradwell. I'm just. I was so overwhelmed with just fulfillment. With just like betting on myself, not knowing about how much money I was gonna make over there, if it was gonna be worth it to leave my family and like go over there. I knew I was gonna make a profit, but I didn't know how much of a profit I was gonna make. And so then to have good matches every single weekend, and then on top of that, even better than having good matches is meeting so many great people that took care of me. Mm -hmm. Like the people in Wales took care of me so well. The people up in Preston took care of me so well. Like in Norwich, I got to make, I made so many friends and so many connections that I can't wait to go back. Yeah, That's the well, best. It kind of leads right? into my and next like, question. You know, what was your favorite non-wrestling thing that you did while over there? Oh. One night, uh, so I did two shows in Wales that I talked about my first weekend there. Then I stayed an extra day on Tuesday and I did a seminar. And so I did my seminar and I'm very passionate with my seminars. I go ham in my seminar. AK's been to one of them before you saw yep. me. I get emotional almost every time. Like I it's like two hours of like fun and drills and like advice and it's awesome. And that's a Tuesday night. And, and most guys got to go to work the next morning. But like two wrestlers and the promoter stuck around and we all went to a pub on a Tuesday night at like midnight. Like my seminar is from like 8 to 10 or like 7.30 to 10. And then we go to the bar at like 11, the pub, and we just sit there and talk and drink until like 3.30 in the morning. Just talking about wrestling. Just two wrestlers and the promoter. And we're just... Bang, 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 spitting ideas at each other, doing this. And this promoter, no one I don't like to drink, is just, boom, <laughs> here's another, here's another, here's another. I'm like, I don't want these <laughs> at all. Like, he would sneak away. I would pour some of my beer into his so he would refill so I didn't have to drink it. Because I know my limit. I can, if, if we're all drinking socially, I can get a little buzzed and be done. I don't need to get blackout drunk. I don't need to get slur my words drunk. No, I don't need to do any of that. But then he's, he, we walk all the way back to my hotel. Like, so, so it's like, we didn't leave there till like 4 a.m. But like, as we're leaving, he hears someone singing in a closed karaoke bar. He knocks on the door. We go in there. He knows the people in there. They serve us a few more drinks to make the night last a little longer. So eventually around five, we walk, mm -hmm. me and the promoter, as the two guys, the two guys leave, me and the promoter, he's drunk as hell. Walk all the way back from the bar to my hotel. And he like, we're talking about wrestling the whole time. And like, he's wobbling and half drunk. And it's like 6 a.m. The sun is coming up in Wales in beautiful Wales. And it's like, we just talked all night about wrestling and about life. And it was just like the first weekend there. And I was like, man, I didn't know what to expect coming over here, but this is a fucking awesome first way to start the weekend. So that stands out to me. You know, the last night there, like after the last match at Red Pro, me and like seven, eight other wrestlers went to like another pub just to get food. And we hung out and we were talking and watching our matches back. And like, they were all like asking me questions. How did you enjoy the trip? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And like, so I got to just like be a part of the camaraderie of after a show with all these people. And I really feel like I made a ton of friends. So that was great. Uh, there was two Scottish lads I met in Norwich that we went and, and hung out with. And I don't even want to talk about the stuff I did with these <laughs> motherfuckers. Because that was wild. I'll talk about that all podcast. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Again, man, I keep, I'm just word vomit because like I loved every bit of it. I loved every second. The parts I didn't love was sitting at the Airbnb during the week and not on the weekends. I was trying to save money. I went to Big Ben. I went to see like the sights and sounds, Buckingham Palace in London. I traveled all around London. Oh, I also during the week would go train at different wrestling schools around the way. And there was this one wrestling school that had all these pads and uh, like cushions and like we, me and a bunch of other super flippy wrestlers got together and we were just practicing flips, crazy flips. There's a reel on my Instagram that you can go watch where we're just like going ham with flips. And like flips that I've never done before, I haven't done in years. Mm -hmm. They made, they brought the competitor out of me where I just wanted to flip like them or outdo them or out show. And like, so we, I busted, I did a 630 in the ring, double front flip. I've never done that before in a ring. Nice. But I was so pumped up that day and so feeling it from doing all the flips we did that that I, I was like, man, this was just an awesome day in general. 
So like anytime I was wrestling around people, I had a blast. The days I was just sitting in my Airbnb, trying not to spend money, not so fun. I probably wouldn't go for 17 days again, but I definitely would go back on a trip over there. Absolutely. Nice. That's fucking dope. Um, well, I got probably two, two more questions. One, and you kind of led Absolutely. into it. Talk to me. What do you think your favorite tourist attraction was that you saw? You said you saw Big Ben, uh, Buckingham. Um, what was my favorite tourist attraction? Saw the London Bridge. Yeah. I saw... Uh, the London Eye, big fucking... The... Uh, Ferris, the uh, Ferris wheel they got there. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. um, the London Eye. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think I had more fun doing the yeah. traveling around during the like when I was doing sightseeing, like seeing all the tourists there, enjoying it, being ingratiated in the yes. culture. I think I enjoyed that the most. Does it that does. make sense? It's it like, does. like I just liked meeting people and talking to them and like the pub life and all that. I think I liked that more than I liked any of like, literally, literally, literally. dog, the sightseeing was for Instagram. Yeah. yeah it yeah. was literally for, sure. for pictures for Instagram. For sure. And I and always I really, I like, I like going on tours and stuff. I like going on tours and stuff, but like, I, that's more for me. That's boring to other people. Yeah. Like I like, and, you know, I'm discussing things, it with you like, guys and I agree. AK probably agrees too. You you feel kind of obligated. Well, when you went to Japan, you had a great right. story well, about you kinda, that. You kind of feel obligated to see the touristy things to an extent, right? But at the end of the day, the funnest yeah. part yes. is always hanging out with the locals and getting and to just know the people, divulging into the culture. Uh, but last question I got, I think, is now I want to ask you this: What was especially with you going overseas the first time? What would you say was the greatest culture shock for you over there when you when you went? It's so. Stereotypical, but by far and away, driving on the wrong side of the road is insane. <laughs> is insane. Because, like, I had to travel around England a lot. So, like, people would come pick me up, and we would travel to Wales, and we would drive all the way up to this spot. Like, the amount of roundabouts they have. Yep. And, like, some of them, roundabouts come off of a two-lane highway. So, like, you're a two-lane highway, and you're going to roundabout this way, but I'll show you going to... I was like, where do these connect in this roundabout? And, like, you're also driving on the wrong side. So you're driving on the wrong side of the car and you're driving on the wrong side of the road that I'm not used to. That I, It would take it would seriously take me a few days to adjust to try to drive. I Luckily, I didn't have to drive. But that is insane. Yeah. Uh, also, me, just well, pub well, life. Like, over, everybody just, like, story. goes to a pub. That's a funny story. When I was in London, um, we got in the, the taxi cab. Did you, did you ride a taxi cab? I did not get into the black uh, tax. I did the double decker bus everywhere, fake taxi. or the tube. I love the London tube. Their public transport is is phenomenal. Yeah. But, but the, guy, the great the thing about the black us, cabs, the, the black cabs, they they know. The guy was like, he was, you know, he was talking to us, asking where we're from, and he was like, "Oh, you you guys from America?" He was like, "Well, look, if you ever get homesick, and then he passed this street. He said, just come to this street right here. It's the only street in uh, London that drives on the same side of the road as you guys.'" Wow, that's white. Yeah, I I think you know that you know the black cabs over there. They have to. It's a really hard training. It's very expensive to do the black cabs over there, but they have to take a test called the knowledge. And the knowledge is you have to learn and memorize every single road all around London. You have to know the names of it, know how to get there. They do not use GPSs. They do not use maps. They have it photographically memorized in their head and know the whole outline of London. So, like, they can literally tell you where anything is at ever. And so, like, that's the great thing about the Black Caps. I did not use that, though, because those were very expensive, and I wanted to save as much money as possible on my trip. I uh, used the tube, which is, like, their subway system, or the double-decker red buses. $3, $5 at a time. Train will take you all around London. I... Yeah, I got ingratiated in the culture, learning, or seeing different people use that. I used it every day almost. I love taking the tube anywhere around London. It was awesome. And like you walked everywhere and everywhere off the tube. Like they, they literally don't want you driving in London. They want you to take the tube yeah. or the bus. Man, that's crazy that, oh, that you kind of said that. Because I think my biggest culture shock thing is the, the lack of water they have in Europe. It's crazy. Like we just take for granted over here. 
these large free waters that we have. And they just give you a little bit over there. The lack of air conditioning, oh, God. Oh, brother. God. My Airbnb didn't yeah. have air conditioning. Uh, some of the places I went didn't have air conditioning. I had to crack a window. It's like, I'm not used to that, bro. It's hot <laughs> over here. Turn up the heat. I'm turning up the air con. Nope, I got to crack a window and hope a breeze blows by. What the hell are we doing? <laughs> What the hell are we doing? But I loved it. I mean, I would take that any day of the week. Drive on the wrong side of the road, freaking have no air conditioning. I don't care. Let me go back. Yeah. It was fun, too, because it felt like, you know, it was such a risk and a gamble to go over there, and it turned out to be so well. I enjoyed myself so much that I would, I can't believe I almost considered canceling it because I had some issues on it. But we made it happen, baby. And it's just the first of many, but, I think. First of many tours. But, you know, that just kind of brings us, you know, in my opinion, full circle. You know, from you, who would have thought, you know, Cage from KBW or or should I even say when you were first starting off as Fuego, you know, would be wrestling in Europe. You know, and I think it's a good, a good time to talk about our humble beginnings, you know, uh, you know, where we started it. Yeah, I think it goes back. Like, again, right around the time we were filming um, uh, KBW All or Nothing, where, uh, where it's, you know, we're Red, 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 Team Renegades versus Team KBW. We start making money from our YouTube videos. Right? I remember the first check being like $429. And I take you and Mr. Brown and Paul Wall to a TNA show with our first check, right? And my second check being over a thousand dollars, and I remember telling AK, "I'm about to buy a ring. Yeah. We need to buy a ring for KBW." Mm -hmm. And I knew a guy who made rings not too far from me, in the next town over from me, and I messaged him, and he was like, "Well, he's like the ring I have is a little out of your budget, and also I don't feel comfortable selling a 17 year old <laughs> ring." He's like, "But I do training if you're looking to learn how to be a wrestler." And so I messaged AK about it, and uh, I knew Major Brown was serious at the time. And so I paid for the first session between me, Major Brown, and AK. So much so that we didn't tell anybody else about on KBW that we went to train. We didn't tell Dozer. We didn't tell Paul Wall. Yeah. We didn't tell anybody. And we went the first day, and we learned how to lock up. You know, and me and... Uh, Major Brown were both 18 at the time, so we learned how to bump. AK couldn't bump because he had to sign a waiver right. by his parents, get his waiver signed by his parents. And so we learned how to lock up. We learned how to hit the ropes a little bit. You know, for the most part, we just played around, learned some chain wrestling. But, like, AK, do you still remember the first time you got in the ring? Like, I remember that day and, like, just pulling myself up on the middle rope and being like, I'm about to get into a wrestling Yeah, man, ring. it was insane. I still remember the joy. Yeah, just... You just think of it, I, you always picture it in your mind, but you just never really know how it feels to actually, like, go in between the ropes and get in there, man. And it's like, sometimes you just feel like, like a fish out, out of the water, you know? It's like, huh, this is totally different than a trampoline, you know? It's like, this is like the big leagues. You really feel, like, a little out of place. Like, we're new, we're young. You're like, I don't know, man. It's like, is, are we ready for this? Like, this is a step up from what we've been doing, a huge step up. Then you kind of go, like, through the motions, you know, all right, this is how you locked up. It was very slow at first, you know? And the way he had us bump is like, oh, get on your like, get on all fours, and he like, he'll push you over, and you, that's how you, that's how we bumped, you know. Oh yeah, we sat on his back. Yes, he's yeah. on all fours. We sat on his back, and then he pushes us, yeah. and we fall off his mm -hmm. back and learn how to bump in the exactly. ring, right? Because in wrestling, you have to relearn how to fall. In, and normally in life, when you fall down, you want to try to catch yourself. You put your arms back, you want to catch yourself. Yeah. In wrestling, we want to learn how to fall safely to absorb the impact and uh, let the uh, impact go uh, spread all the way out throughout your body so it doesn't hit just hard in one place. Right. And so learning how to bump was fun. Learning how to roll was fun. And, like, I remember me and AK immediately knew we're going back. We're oh, doing yeah, this we again. So excited. Like, dude, I think was... Major Brown came back one more time, yeah. and then he was done. Yeah, he was done. He kind of was like, nope, not doing this. And that's when we decided to tell Dozer about it. And Dozer started coming to train with us a little bit. Dozer, yeah. do you remember us asking? Do you remember your first time training at all? I do. I what do, do you remember? remember I don't necessarily remember you guys asking. I just, you know, I remember you guys talked me into it and I was excited. But I do remember my first time training. And there's two things, uh, you know, and I'm sure we'll talk about him 
more, but you know, shout out Josh, our trainer, great guy. Um, I remember him, you know, teaching us how to bump, or me, because I was a little behind you guys, I guess. And that had to be one of the hardest hits to my head I've ever gotten when I didn't take that bump yeah. right. And to me, to this day, it's been a while since I've been in the ring, but I feel like learning to take a bump is something you never forget. I feel like I get in there right now and take it perfectly just because I never want to hit my head like I did again. And I remember that. I remember, I think it was AK or you would, you know, you would get on your fours and they, they just push me down and just, and I would take the bump until I got it. And, uh, not only that, like eventually you were trying to learn how to flip yeah. bump and we'd have to get yes. on all fours so you could go yes. a couple yeah. up underneath and flip yes. over. Yes, I remember that. I remember right. that. It took me a long it took me a while, but I got it and I was so yeah. I was so That's happy. the thing. I, I always forget because like me and AK started training on February second of twenty fourteen. Yep. We both had our first match on May twenty fourth of twenty fourteen. About three months, right? And we did one to three times a week, weekly. There. And I'm trying to remember how many times you came and trained with us. I want to say you did at least five or six sessions. Yeah, I know, I know, I did enough. Right? But I don't think it's more than I that. I did it enough to where you know I got pretty close with to Josh, know how to roll and bump. And I, yeah. I went to shows with you guys. I think I went to two, three shows. You know, yeah, because it was like I, I was really. Ready. I remember you, you going to Mardi Gras with us, but I don't remember you going to shows with us. No, no, I, yeah, I mean, well, was remember, guard, McGee, Mississippi. Well, remember, I was a security guard at one, and then another one I yeah. went to was very far away. Cause it was the same night Frazier and them wrecked. And I was so worried on the way home because, you know, we were so far away and I got the call to tell you Rick, and I was like, oh, my God, are they all right? Um, Which one did you be the security guard for? Was it the one in Pensacola at the big yes. high, uh, the shrine yes, temple? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the, that's where we had our first, first match. match yeah. yeah, me and AK had our first match there. And, like, we all three were security guards around the ring. I, I feel like everyone came to that because our very first match. Like, like every, all our family. Yes, but I forgot that we did the we did the security stuff beforehand. Yeah. I remember I had an all gray jumpsuit that I was wearing. It was real <laughs> weird. It had number seven on it and everything. Yeah. I remember exactly what I was wearing that day now. We both ref a bit. Up. Yep, man, you both refereed matches. Like, I believe my match is actually on the KBW channel of the one I refereed. Oh, yeah. Um, and I have the video of the one you refed on my laptop. Um, there's a great picture of you talking to Brittany. Do you remember oh, that yeah, photo? Yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like and in your match, did you referee the guy got hurt and you had to <laughs> throw up the X of like, hey, he's hurt, he's hurt. And the most then, random shit happens to me, man. Like, it would happen does. to me. I would be it like, because I'm already awkward as it is, and most awkward. I'm always putting myself in the most awkward situations for some reason. So I don't know why. Yeah. So just to get that timeline right, like I said, we try to train in February, and we and we're just training every day. And I'm trying to train as well as do uh, high school soccer. And so that, like, took up the majority of my time that we didn't have as much time for KBW. Mm -hmm. So, like, in February is really when the upload stopped becoming consistent. It's because we start training every week, and then yeah. on Saturdays I'm doing soccer tournaments or stuff like that. Uh, but AK and me were very consistent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eventually Dozer, I don't know if it was his mom said he couldn't do it, or if it, like he just didn't have the, something that happened where he was like, you know what, not – not right now. Well, I think it was. Like, a, I'll come back. I think it was a combination of school right and, you know, my mom, especially with the, uh, like having to sign the waiver and stuff. Man, you know how hard it was to talk her into even signing that thing, and I was just like, yeah. I had it in my mind protective. more. So that made her rethink. That made her rethink us doing KBW yeah, at her house. It did. Yeah, the waiver so, was like, oh snap, is, people could sue. Yeah, it did. So it kind of messed up, you know, the, the flow of that to an extent. But I think I had it in my mind that. You know, if if you guys were still doing it once I graduated or got to my senior year, I would get back to it hard. And and I think when you left for Oklahoma, I kind of just was like, man, you know. Well, yeah, I, let, before we jump to there, let's go. So we have our first match May 24th. Me and AK yeah. started. And, like, that whole summer, we're going hard. Yeah. Wrestling almost every weekend, at least once a month, I would say in different spots, traveling with our trainer, Josh Payne, right? We're doing some tag matches together. We're doing, we're wrestling, like, we're wrestling each other a bunch and doing tag matches together. We did the triple threat match three or four times with Dustin. Yep. Uh, the different Dusty. Uh, uh, D Dusty Payne is our, our trainer's partner. We did a bunch of tag matches against them. Um, 
We teamed with Bullet Bob Armstrong. We wrestled the Armstrongs multiple yeah. times. We had a bunch of fun until the end of July. So for three months, we wrestled a ton. And then I had to move back, move to Oklahoma for college. Mm -hmm. And AK wrestled more sporadically because then school starts back. He's still a senior in school. I graduated. So he's wrestling occasionally with Josh Payne on the weekends, like a Pensacola here, there. Yeah. Then I come home during Christmas. We wrestle in Pensacola again, right? And he does sporadic dates. How, but when do you remember having – I come back the summer, the next summer. Yeah. We have a six-man tag where some guy chops right. way too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that's your last match, right? Yeah, for a while. Forever yeah. after that. Yes, yeah, my last match. So, right. Yeah. Until you move to Oklahoma with me yeah. and have a couple more matches with me in Oklahoma right. for like a small period of time. Mm -hmm. But AK gets out of the business at that point. He decides I'm going to college. Yeah. You know, you don't live here anymore. You were kind of my, my motivation. It was more fun doing it with you than it was trying to do this by myself. Right. right, AK? Is that what you would say? I don't want to speak for you in that sense. Well, like I said, um, I... Uh, just looking back on it, you know, I it was probably premature me to like, oh, I'm done after like one like bad incident. You know, I always say that like, oh, during the moment it felt like, oh my god, like I don't want to do this. This is like these guys rough me up, and for some reason, like I don't know, I just felt very unsafe. Like I was like, oh shit, like for some reason it hit me. Like, oh yeah, I don't know these guys. Like I could, anybody can do this to me. And then I got then I got in my head like, oh shit. Anybody can do this to me. Now he's, I was like, why would I? Why would I put myself in this situation? Now it started made me not to trust anyone. I was like, oh god. I don't, I, yeah, I think I don't trust you've always been, you've always been on your guard and have anxiety about being in situations where you don't know people. Yeah, exactly. Right? Would you agree? All the time. Yeah. Like, like I, I don't like. I'm usually yeah, especially when you were younger. Yeah. Like growing up, like I don't really talk to like new people at all. Like I'm pretty shy. Like usually it takes a while for me to like warm up to people. If they're around me a lot. I do like getting more comfortable and I talk to people and stuff but when I'm like first meeting somebody that's usually the wrestling business you're first meeting someone and you're like now y'all put on a match and now y'all like get physical with each other and you really have to put a lot of trust in them and I was like but in my mind I was like oh like everyone knows what they're doing like I was young right I was thinking like oh everyone's wrestling like KBW we kind of knew what we were doing like these guys are professionals everyone knows what they're doing everyone knows how to wrestle you don't you realize, don't realize a lot of people show. do not know how to wrestle <laughs> at these shows man and like me and AK are 130 and 120 pounds a piece at that time yeah. when we were getting started. And like being smaller, guys think they can take advantage of mm -hmm. you or throw you around or beat you up and think that you won't chop back because you're the young green kid. Right. Right. And I think with me there, AK had somebody to stick up for him, to look out for him, to motivate him to keep going. Yeah. Without me there, he's like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Correct? Exactly. Because like, at least I knew, like, if, uh, something, if that happened again, you'd at least be there to, like, you know, like, I have somebody to, like, talk to about it or give me some comfort. But when you were gone, like, yeah, you know, Josh was there, but, you know, like, well, he's still kind of new to me as well. You know, it's like he's our trainer. You know, he hasn't been, you know, around forever. And I know he's looking out for me too, but it's not the same. And, like... It's not the same. Because, like, he's in the business. He knows these guys. He's friends with these right. guys. He's trying to keep connections and stuff steady to where, at the end of the day... Me and you had each other's back. We're our first priority. Right. Like, yeah, people forget that we're first cousins. Mm -hmm. Like, we're blood, bro. You're like my brother. Like, you touch him, you mess with you, him, you're getting me, bro. Like, mm -hmm. any day of the week, I'll swing, you know, for my people. Yeah. And so, I just, it broke my heart, though, because it made you fall out of love with wrestling. It, it did, yeah. Fall out I was of like, love. I'm done with this. Like, this is You stopped so watching. Yeah, like, it really just ruined, just crushed my whole spirit. Like, I was like, and, and I, I I don't think uh, people understand, like, because I know some people are like, man, that's, you go oh, over dramatic. Like, it couldn't have been that bad. Like, dude, you was there. It was, like, I tried to get out of that corner, like, five or six times. Like, they would not let me out of the corner. They just kept doing it. It was like. Beating you up. They kept. It was like. It was like. It was like a hazy, bro. It was like, they was doing it on purpose. Like, they was like legit like shooting on me. Like, it was like, no, like, no, like, you're just going to take And this. they didn't know what they were doing, though. That's the worst part. It's like, they thought, oh, this is how you wrestle. And, like, when they got to the back, we had some other really good wrestlers yeah. back there that stuck up for us. Like, what the hell are y'all doing? Not only did y'all beat these kids up, but y'all had a bad match in the process. Like, it was like, y'all are not good. Y'all are not as good as you think you are. And, like, it become a whole issue in the locker mm -hmm. room, too. And I think that's another situation AK didn't like being in. Yeah. Right? Of that type of hostile environment. 
Especially at that time. Again, you got to think, he's 17, 18 years old at this time. Yes. Very young. Not as mature. Hadn't been at, uh, as much as had as much experience. You know, I tried to talk him back. Like, literally, like, six to eight months later, he come and moved in with me for about four months in Oklahoma. Yeah. He trained and wrestled with me a little bit. But I really think he had a whole crisis while he was here. Like, he was kind of living his life. And, like, he was like, man, what do I want to freaking do with my life? Right. Would you agree, AK, when you were? Up? Yeah, because I was like, I felt like I was going through the motions, you know. It wasn't like, like, it just kind of. no goals. Yeah, it just kind of hit me. It's just like, man, I need to, like, figure out what I really want to do. Because, like, I'm getting, I'm, I'm out of high school. So, like, it's time for me to figure out what do I really want. I was like, you know what? I do like wrestling. I do figure out, I, I, do want, I do want to get back into it. But the first thing's first. Like, if it doesn't work out, because I know my, I know who I, I know how I am and, like, I'm kind of am fragile, like you know, I can get seriously hurt. Like knowing me, I probably wouldn't have gotten seriously hurt, but you know, if I wasn't more careful. So I was like, you know what? Maybe it is good to go to college and have at least a fallback plan to get a degree. So if wrestling doesn't work out, I can have something to fall back on, and at least have a degree and get a good job. If you know, I don't make it as a huge like star in wrestling, or whatever. So that was kind of my route. So, you know what? I do like video games. I was going. I was like, you know, I'm going to go to journalism and I'm going to be a journalist so I can write about video games and work at IGN. And like, that kind of inspired me. So that's what I did, you know. So I went to uh, college for four years. Like, I didn't wrestle really at all. I don't think I even wrestled at all the whole time I was in college, to be honest. I can't think of I know one time you came back down to Bama and we did some match at some church. But I don't know if I was, I think maybe I was still in college. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah I forgot about that. Then we tagged together. Yeah, we tagged that it was some random, like, because it's a church event. Yeah. And they wanted us to wrestle. I was like, oh, yeah. I guess we'll do it. Um, yeah, I talked you into doing one more. Yeah, so so that happened. I, I graduated, and I, but that was twenty twenty. I graduated because um, COVID was going off, and like I did, we didn't get the uh, proper uh, send off for graduation. Yes, but during that twenty twenty, yeah. I was started doing extra work for AEW exactly, at yeah. that time, and that leads to the next part. But before I get to that, I kind of want to talk to Dutt. Mm-hmm. You see us debut, you see us start wrestling, you see AK quit wrestling. Where are you at mindset-wise of of watching us do all of this? Um, You know, a part of me was like, damn, man, you know, I really wish I would have stuck with it. But at the same time, and I think it goes back to you leaving, because as much as I love wrestling, I love hanging out with my friends more. And so it's like, mm-hmm. I really wanted to do it because of you guys. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like, by the time you left and AK was going through his stuff, I would have had to, I still would have been behind, had to train some more. And, you know, it was just like never the right time per se. Um, But again, I mean, even to this day, I wouldn't say I'm jealous. I'm not jealous at all, but I'm just super happy and like of you, you know, because you stuck with it, because you become the man you are. And I'm like, damn, you know. Who knows if me and AK would have stuck with it, we make it be right there with it. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind if y'all fully committed to it again, y'all could still do something in wrestling. It just depends on how dedicated you would want to do it. But I think there's a wrestling makes me a certain type of happy that it doesn't make other people. And I can't force that on people. Mm-hmm. Uh but I also think wrestling lends itself to a lot of my strengths in life, period. I've always been super athletic. I've always been incredibly tough. I've always been incredibly creative. And, like, my memory's always been great. Uh, And then I think I honed those skills with KBW of, like, having to plan a match, how to work out a match, how to, you know, make myself sell and bump crazy and... Like I'm a people pleaser at heart, so my bumping and selling for people is nuts. I want to freaking go crazy for people in that instance. Uh, I'm super easy to get along with. I probably befriend shitty people sometimes just because <laughs> I want everybody to like me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I it just I would thrive in that where AK does not deal with dumb people. AK's yeah, like, screw that. So I don't want to. Yeah. If you're an idiot or if you're dumb or you're not someone I vibe with, jail with, get away from me. I need to get away from you. Mm-hmm. Where I'm not like that. Yeah. My personality does not gel with the wrestling business at all, man. It's just, even now to this day, like, I'm in a weird spot because, like, so, oh, yeah, you know, I'm back in the wrestling, I'm doing my thing, but now it's like, I, I'll tell you a story that just happened on the last show, right? So this last show happens. I wrestled for these guys before, you know, I wrestled there before, 
you know, I got paid, whatever, everything went fine. So the guy said, hey, we want you back. So I come back, same thing. I do like, because they do like YouTube like shows, right? And uh, so like they do like a YouTube show. And um, so, all right, I'll come back and do like two, I do like two or three matches for them. They film it. And then like uh, at the end of the night, like he, I was kind of waiting around. He was paying everybody. Then I never got my envelope. I was like, huh, that's weird. I didn't get, get paid this time. I was like kind of strange. I saw him give it to like referees and like managers and other wrestlers. I'm like, I was like, huh, I don't know if I got singled out here, if I did something wrong. I was like, okay, whatever. So I go back home that night, um, and I text him. I was like, hey, you know, what was your thought process of, you know, not uh, giving me, you know, paying me this time? He's like, oh, well, yo. he was like, he gave me, like, some weird, like, I would say I got a BS excuse, to be honest. And I was, that kind of made me feel like, damn, like, what is going on this right that I'm just not getting? What's well, not clicking for me in the wrestling business? Because, like, I'm just not, like, because like oh like, I, what, what and it's just such a weird disconnect. I thought this guy liked me. I thought he wanted me around. He's like he said I was doing good in matches. Now he doesn't pay. He's like well this time yeah sometimes like he was telling me like yeah sometimes we don't pay like next month I get you back. I was like uh, I was like why didn't you tell me that beforehand? Though? He's like hey, yeah we might yeah we might, that's bad business. We might not pay you this time though, know, but it's like I would like, I would like that to know beforehand. So like, yeah, in my head I was like oh yeah he paid me last time I'm getting paid. But I feel like he wanted me to know that for some reason. I feel like he wanted me to come. So, oh yeah, he thinks we get paid this time, but this time I'm going to like say like, oh, we, we were short tonight and not paying. I was like, that's kind of what he says. Oh, we kind of short tonight. He's like, it's like, uh, but my mind is like, you paid referees. It's like you gotta pay the wrestlers first. I, that's how I am. So like, I, I wrestle. I was like, I get referees. I get the guys that put their body yeah, on. Yeah, I line. get. And also like, you pay like the uh, like this girl. Like she's like does interviews. And, like she, I saw her get envelope. I'm like. But I, I fucking wrestled three matches and I don't get an envelope. I don't get like tw- you wrestled three matches yeah. and didn't get paid. Didn't get paid. I was like, what the hell? Give me this promoter's name right fucking now. And, I, and I'm like, that's just that was just I was just like, nah, bro. I'm just not. I'm not with this. It's like I I was kind of like being cordial with him. He was like, and he was like, he was kind of giving me like his excuse, wherever. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I was kind of understand, blah blah blah. I was like, in my mind, I was like, I'm not working for this guy. Again. I'm just not gonna do it. I don't care if he asks me back. That's just bad business, bro. Like you could have just let me know, like yeah, probably you won't get paid or anything. Like, and and the fact I was like, it wouldn't have bothered me as much if I as like other like I saw like it's like there's you know like people she does interviews. She's a man like this guy's a manager, you know, a referee or like, or like you know commentary. It's like oh, they go those guys deserve to get paid. Don't get me wrong, I, everyone deserves to get paid, but I feel like the wrestlers deserve to get paid first. My, in my opinion, maybe that's wrong. Maybe I just no. Like, that's true. That's I'm true. Like, I fucking that's the thing, right? Matches. In wrestling, in wrestling, you got to deal with crappy promoters. You got to yeah. deal with crappy people, crappy wrestlers. It's such a smorgasbord. Of some nights are phenomenal and you love wrestling. Yeah. Some nights suck mm-hmm. and you hate wrestling. And if you have too many of those bad nights in a row, it gets into your mind. You're like, why am I doing this? Yeah. What is the point? Mm-hmm. I'm not making money. I'm beating my body up. I'm being away from my peoples. For what? And I see for this, and I yeah. see it beat people down. I see so many people get beat down and not want to be a wrestler anymore because they have too many bad nights or deal with so many promoters like this, and they just have a string of bad luck that they're like, you know what? Fuck wrestling. Yeah. And, and, not, and also another thing I've been dealing with, so I've been, nothing else, it's like, wrestling business is like, it's so weird for me, like, for some reason this doesn't click, like, the business side of it that I'm just not getting, because for the longest time I've been trying to get new wrestling gear, I mean, Fuego knows this, and like, yeah, he's trying to get gear made, man. I've been, gear I've been trying to get gear the- made for like three years, it feels like. Like no, like for some reason, no one wants to take my money. Nobody wants his money. I'm like, yeah. bro, I, I I have the money. Just please make my. I, I message all these people. Never, I never get a message back. I finally someone says, yeah, they'll make it. This dude takes forever to make it, and turns out I was waiting for like six or seven months for this guy to make my gear. And he's like, you know what? I can't actually make it anymore. Sorry, bro, you're gone. I'm like, so I've been waiting for this gear for seven months, and he's like, ah, eh, you know what? Uh, and I actually paid. Or he's like, you know what? Here's your money back. And I'm like, bro, I, I, I could, all this time I could have been, you know, having someone else do it. But you was just, because every time I mess with like every month, it says, hey, man, you still making money? He goes, oh, yeah, I got you, bro. I'm about to make it right now. He said it like three times. He said, oh, yeah, I'm making it right now. Oh, I'm making it right now. I said, bro, and I never saw this gear, ever. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. What, what's going like, I'm this, I don't know what's Wrestling like, gear makers are the shadiest people in the business. I don't know what's going on. Like, they're the shadiest people in the business. I tried to message multiple people for AK. Yeah. They still didn't. Yeah, exactly. He messaged people for me, like, and they wouldn't message me back. They just, like, I was like, bro, like, do they not want money? I haven't, I, 
I'll yeah. give you the it's money. It's very simple to make this gear. Yeah. It's not even that hard. It's like, I just need some tights. And so, like, <laughs> stuff like that just gets on AK's side Dude, where he doesn't can't. want to even deal with people. Yeah, like that's that. that's why it's, it's hard. It's a it's a really hard for me in the like business side of it. like I love wrestling. I'm in there like it's so fun. Don't get me wrong. We get it twisted. Well, speaking of your love, speaking of your love for wrestling, yeah. like you left wrestling for years and years and years, and then I said, hey, Sammy's got me booked for AEW. I've been doing it every week. I got this big match with QT coming up. Would you drive up to Atlanta? To watch it with me. Maybe what was first? Did you come to the Nightmare Factory first to film that thing with me? Or did you come to the show first? I want to say... Um, hmm, I want to say Nightmare Factory you come to the Nightmare Factory. You come, yeah, you came to Nightmare Factory. So it was like sometime in October, November. I filmed a bit with Cody Rose. And Cody said, hey, fly to Atlanta and, and film this thing with mm-hmm. me. Which is crazy because I wasn't signed at the time, and we were just supposed to film it while we was at the AEW Dark. But he ran out of time. He was like, "Hey, I'll just fly you from Dallas to come to my hang out with me, and we'll film it." And so I was like, "I knew I was gonna need a good cameraman. I knew AK was about five hours away. I said, AK, why don't you drive up and hang out with me this weekend, mm-hmm. and you can like film it at the Nightmare School." And like I think right then he saw me doing AEW Dark, and he saw that school, and he's kind of sparked his interest again. I'm like. Maybe I would do something like this again. I, I, He's like, maybe. Yep. Go ahead, well, I was go just going to say I agree, but I, I agree with you 100%. I, I think it was that because from my perspective here at home when he was here with me, it was kind of like he had gotten out of it, right? But then all of a sudden when he goes up there with you, I see that passion come back in AK and he's excited and he's he's talking about it. And like I, Watching I remember we again. went on like a, a beach trip and like, you know, he was just talking about it and so excited about it. And I was like, he, he, well, this he's is exactly, like this is exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly, this is exactly what happened. I'll tell you exactly what happened in my mindset, right? So, growing, like, you know, going through all these shows, like me and me and Fuego, we did like a lot of like, we call them like shindies, I guess, you know, promotions you just work for that's kind of like very low key. They, they're not like, they're, they don't really like uh, put a lot of effort into like their shows. It's kind of just thrown together or whatever. But, uh, He's got his kids here. It's kind of just thrown together wherever at these, like, very small towns. It's like a lot of people, like, a lot of weird people you're around. It's like a very, very bad vibes a lot of the time with these places me and Fuego went to as we were going to these shows, right? Then finally I get to Nightmare Factory, and I was like, wait a minute. These guys. How professional. These guys know what they're doing. These guys are actually nice and, like, you know, not out of their mind wacky and crazy and saying all these weird <laughs> shit and trying to make you do cocaine in the back. Like, these guys know what they're doing. And like, I'm like, oh, and, uh, there are promotions like this that are very professional and know what they're doing. And they, and they, it's like, oh, I want to be a part of this. I love wrestling. If people are nice to me and know what they're doing and like very professional about it and like really know their shit and all about the wrestling instead of the weird like uh, politics of it. It's like, hey, man, you want to be a wrestler? Come here. It's like, this is a great, this is a great opportunity for you and we can do it. And I love the vibes. I love the people around. And it just, it just, it fulfilled me. It's like, bro, this is the type of wrestling I want to be around. It's like, it's like, this is what I wanted the whole time. It's like an actual like facility like this. But unfortunately, the wrestling business isn't like that. There's not a lot of places that are like, you know, the Nightmare Factory and like like big shows like, like you know, GCW or other big shows like that. So like the, the night... I, oh, I was going go to finish my thought. You know, the Nightmare Factory is so, so nice. It was very professional. They knew what they were doing but like a lot of facilities. I was like, oh, this is where I want to be at. Places like this, you know. And I saw like GCW, they huge, and they, they and Fuego was like, oh yeah, man, they're like a very professional. And these other big promotions, like they're really professional. They know what they're doing and all that. And I'm like, obviously, you need to like start start low to you know to get to those spots. Work your way up. Work your way up. And that's what always gets me. It's like I I know I need to do this, but I hate that I have to do this because it it drains me. I don't like doing this for these like these other promotions because the way they treat me. I just, I always feel like when I go to these other promotions, not as professional, don't know what they're doing. And, you know, like give me the run around, not pay me, say they go to pay me, but don't pay me. An- another guy that uh, I've worked for, he's always late to pay me. He's like, Oh yeah, I get you. And like, he, I messaged him the other day. He's like, Oh yeah, I think I still owe you like the uh, 40 is like $40. I'm like, yeah, you do. And like, I said, I get it to you. That was like three weeks ago. I still haven't gotten that yet. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I don't know what I'm, I like. I feel like, am I too nice? Am I like, am I too nice for wrestling? You are too nice. I, I'm, you I are too nice. Like, uh, you have to show some of this anger 
there. Yeah, but then, like, if you do, sense? though, they're like, oh, now don't book this guy. They do this whole politic and thing. It's like, oh, this guy's, uh, he thinks he's the shit. He wants more money. He, attitude he wants, problem. Hey, he's got an attitude it. problem. Like, then they had, well, they, I felt like we skipped ahead a bit because I want to say then you come and watch one of the shows of me versus QT, and I think that's then when you decided, yeah. I'm back. I'm doing mm-hmm. this. I'm going to the Nightmare Factory. I'm going to retrain completely with Cody and QT, yeah. and I'm going to get back in this fully. And now you've been back into it, but you also, you know, fell in love during this time yep. and, Ooh. you know, been dealing with a whole new life outside of wrestling. Yep. And so, you know, you've been trying to transition. You had a big move. You had, uh, you know, so now you have to readjust to all the people in wrestling around there and trying to make new connections and stuff around there, which has been slower because you've been working on getting a job. You've been working on future plans. Right. And... You're really living a good life with your with your significant other right now, so it's like exactly. I get it. Wrestling's a little slower for you right now, <laughs> but like Dut has been coming with me to shows recently, and Dut, what do you think about my transition? You know, from KBW to AEW to now back on the Indies. What do you see when yeah. you watch me wrestle back then to now? I'm not just saying this because we're friends, people. I swear to God, I went with this man about a month or two ago now to a show. Uh, when he was back towards this way. And just, I think it was the first time I had saw him wrestle in person, probably since the earlier training days, definitely pre AEW. And this guy, Fuego, was just so much better than everybody. And I'm not trying to say that in a cocky way. It's just like his, his skill was just so amazing. Like he undoubtedly was the pop there. Like he was the showstopper. I mean, it was it was crazy. His talent is just yeah. here. I mean, it, he said it. He said he said it like you look like the best wrestler on the show by far yeah. and away. Like it was like nobody compared to how smooth and good I was match wise and in ring and stuff. And that made me feel good because that was a light night for me, brother. <laughs> that wasn't even one of my best performances. That was an that was me taking it easy. I was phoning it in that night because I knew what type of crowd I had. And uh, it still ended up really cool to see. And I, I, it's fun to have those nights with Dutt now when he gets to come with me and watch me wrestle because we have a good time. Oh, God. I mean, and that's what I was I don't want to fully go through my whole AEW career. Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say, you know, um, wrestling takes sacrifice, you know. And I know life happens and we yeah. all have different Tremendous. priorities in life. But, but if we go – has definitely made the sacrifice. I watched this man go from just doing shit shows here at home in Oklahoma, you know, like him and AK were talking about, to putting in, you know, he worked part-time at a fucking trampoline park, you know, and then would go and, and wrestle and just to try to make shit happen. I mean, he has earned everything he's gotten. And he, he deserves so much more even still. But, but you know, it goes back to, you know, me and AK as well, you know, if we had the passion that Fuego had, maybe we could have made it. Oh, yeah. But we all, you know, we all have our different uh, things in life. And Fuego's is no, there's no doubt his yeah. passion is wrestling. And, uh, you know, I think AK's is the love of his life, which is nothing wrong with that, you know. And <laughs> um, But I just think, you know, I love, I love doing that. Now, I would love if I could just go with you, if I could just quit my job, <laughs> just go with you on the road all the time, brother, just to hang out with you and just tell the stories, not even wrestle. Yeah, yeah, brother. Hopefully, I can get so famous one day that you, I just need a security guard. And to be done, honest, it's not that I don't have the passion for. It. I really do have the passion. No, for no, no. I know. Like, I'm like really into it. It's right. just the people are around it. It just bothers me. I'm just, I just can't. It's like deal. I, I say like Fuego right now, right? He's going to GCW. He's going to like Red Pro. He's going to these places. Like seems like having a fun with a lot of guys and like stuff. I would, be, I would thrive in an environment like that. Like I feel like. He's wrestling people that can actually wrestle. Most of the time when I'm wrestling people, it's like, it's like it's kind of like we're on a different wavelength, you know. I and like it just doesn't. We just not there at the same moment. But I feel like if I'm at these like more professional shows that I can put on great matches too. But I feel like I just like you said, the part of business is you got to start you know at the bottom and work your way up. And I just feel like I've been at the bottom for so long. It's like damn, when am I going to finally you catch a break? I don't know. Yeah, I think the Young Bucks in AEW said it best. Like, I was talking to them one night backstage. You know, they're EVPs of the company. And this is early on in, in, in AEW, so definitely things have changed. But they were like, yeah, man. Like, one, 
great wrestlers are great wrestlers, he said, but we wanted great people first. We wanted to curate a locker room of just people with phenomenal attitudes, people that were fun to be around, not assholes. We wanted to curate a locker room that had no assholes in it. Mm-hmm. And clearly, you know, things change over time, big name signings, you know, different people take control. I get it. But, like, I loved that because it was like coming to work with a bunch of professionals, having a bunch of fun, and, like, enjoying time with each other. And I think that is the best. And that's the thing I love the most about now being at the status I am in wrestling is that for the most part, they put me with young guys that are hungry or guys at my level. And so I'm either helping a young guy try to, like, have the best match he's ever had, or I'm wrestling a guy where it's iron sharpening iron. We're both just two professionals going at it, making each other better. And, like, unfortunately, at AK's level right now, you don't get that. Sometimes you're wrestling guys, veterans that barely ever wrestle and don't care, or young guys that don't stay in shape and barely do this, or guys with clear mental disabilities that shouldn't be in the ring that are in the ring. Like, you deal with them on all facets and levels. And uh, I understand. I have had, like I said earlier, I have a patience for that, where AK sometimes doesn't have a patience. It's hard, for man. It's hard for me. I just don't have the patience for some people. I just, I, I hate that my personality is this way. I really don't. I wish I, I wish I had the mindset Fuego has, where he can just like brush that shit off, like it's all wrestling all the time, like. But I don't know, man. And he's social too. Like Fuego's a more social person. He can get along with everybody. But for me, I can't get along with everybody. It's just God honest truth. I just can't. It's yeah. just part of my personality is it t- I'm like I pick and choose like I just know certain people that I vibe with if I don't vibe with you I'm like I don't want to be around you that's just how I am you know but I yeah. can't help it that's just that's just how I grew up that's just how my uh, my my mind works and how I look at people yep. and like I just get easily annoyed that's always been one of my flaws it's like I always do get easily annoyed and I I can't for some reason I, I'll I say I've gotten better over the years, but there, it's still there, you know. It's still, like, I do get easily annoyed. That's what I love, because, like, you used to, like, go go mouth shut. If you got mad, you would get mad, and you wouldn't say a word, and you wouldn't talk to nobody, yeah. and you would, and then I would be like, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. I just want to go home. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Like, and now, at least, you will fucking talk about mm-hmm. what the problem is. Yeah. Like, I'm like, bro, what's wrong? It's like, bro, this fucking dude over here said this and this, and, like, uh, you know, I don't even want to be here. I don't like confrontation like, you know, like, I don't, he doesn't. I don't want to like doesn't. get in arguments and like get into some like. This is another thing I hate about wrestling. Like, I'm, I got a wrestling uh, Facebook, right? Also, you know, AK Reed, check me out on Facebook, whatever. And my God, you know, I follow some wrestlers on there, dude. They're so Facebook toxic, like wrestlers. I'm like, they be they be oh like doing God. these whole paragraphs about some promoter, some wrestler did this to him in the back, didn't pay this man. I'm gonna I'm gonna meet you on the street, real life, gonna fight you. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh not book you again, and like I'm seeing all this shit. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like it's just so weird and toxic at these like man like you know, and so and these weird ass rivalries between companies like some companies are like hey you work for that guy you can't work with us then i'm like i don't even know anybody up here what do you mean i don't know who y'all hate what's this guy do with me yeah <laughs> i'm just like it's yeah, just it's so, so dumb. stupid and it, it, it's he, too he does, dumb he likes the patience it's too dumb for me i can't i also have a way of like i have a special skill being able to compartmentalize anything and being able to focus on my next task like right now i am exhausted i, I drove 15 hours today back from a show last night I am tired, but you wouldn't know it from this podcast because I lock in, right? Something could have happened right beforehand. My dog could have just died. I would have been just fine for this pod. You know what I'm saying? I can be able to compartmentalize anything that happens. And so, like, me and a guy might get into an argument right here, right now. And five minutes later, I'll be fine. I'll be over here enjoying my life because I can compartmentalize and focus on the next task. I don't let past stuff like that affect me Mm -hmm. if it doesn't have to. Where AK will stew on something and get mad about hey, it. Hey, I hold grudges. Don't, don't get it twisted, guys. You, you, want, you, <laughs> want, you want someone to hold some grudges? I'll, be, I'll hold some grudges now. I, I won't say it to your face. I won't be confrontational. I won't, you know, go at you on Facebook. I won't, you know, do anything crazy. I just I just completely cut you off. That's my way of doing it. I was like, you know what? Yeah. I don't like you. You're done with me. And that's it. We go our separate ways. I ain't got to fight with you. Yeah, we have I ain't a... got to have no confrontation, no social media posts. I'm just like... I'm out. That's just how I am. Yeah, I, I say this all the time on long car rides. I say, uh, say back in the day, they didn't have Facebook to vent. 
I was like, we we did all our shit talking in the car on the ride to the show and on the ride back from the show. Yeah. We talk all our shit here. Let's get it out now. What happened? What said it in the car stays in the car. We talk shit on this guy and that guy and why we don't like him and why we don't like her. And then we leave it here. Yeah. And we go on about our day. And we come back. And at least we know it. Right. And I, I always enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, I'm very sociable and I try to befriend everybody. Even if I don't, I, I could have a conversation, smile at you, talk to you the whole time and not like you and leave there and be like, mm, don't like that guy. Maybe won't have as many conversations with him. But I'm going to be friendly and cordial in the moment where AK is just like, um, why I you feel, I feel like way? a lot of people know I don't like them. <laughs> yes. I feel like they just know, like, yeah, dad yeah, doesn't like that so well. I mean, it's probably it's true. You gotta really wrong me for me not to like you. I can dislike you as a wrestler. I can dislike your attitude. I can say maybe you're not as smart or self aware as I wish someone was. Mm-hmm. But it takes a lot for me to like just actively dislike you. You have to really wrong me for that. Right. Two different personalities. But uh, absolutely. I don't want to go about. I don't want to talk about my whole journey from KBW to AEW. I think that's a separate podcast in itself. I could talk about every little bit of my road in the indies and who I wrestled and where I've wrestled for and do all of that. I feel like that could be another podcast all on its own. I really wanted to see you guys' vision and talk to y'all about how getting back into wrestling, what y'all like about wrestling. You know, I love when AK did get back into wrestling, he started watching again and we got to be able to talk about yeah. it again. Like I said, I got my best friend back to talk about that. And now with the bloodline stuff going on, Dozier keeps up with wrestling a little bit more yep. through TikTok and such. And we get to talk to him about like the big pay-per-views and stuff as well. So that's fun. That he's back into it a little bit too, and then of course getting to do this podcast each week, you had to you know sprinkle in a little bit of wrestling here and there, which is great. Yeah. But I think we might be able to call this a pod, boys. Y'all enjoy yourselves tonight. You have anything else to add? Um, just a little bit to add because I don't want people to like, you know, it's like oh my god, AK hates everyone. It's not that I'm like, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, it's like just know if I do like you, if I do like mess with you and I talk to you, just know you're 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 in good spot. You're very special, you know, because I. I feel like, uh, you know, like, you know, Fuego just said, oh, he likes, you know, he's more cordial with everybody, you know, like, so you, you see, you already said he sometimes he laughs, so, well, you don't know if Fuego likes, you, you might think Fuego likes you, but you don't <laughs> know, I, you would know if I don't like you, at least, you wouldn't know if I don't like you, I'm just saying. That's called being a professional. <laughs> I'm just saying, you don't know it. Like, it also, it's shot. called being fake. Yeah, but it's also called being a professional. Yeah, I don't, I can't be fake. Sometimes you gotta it's be not fake the fact as a that professional. I, I don't like being fake. I just can't. It's just not in me to be. I just, for some reason, I just like, it's just my, what do you call it, resting bitch face or whatever? You just see it on my face yeah. when I'm like talking RBF. to someone. Or, like, you could tell, like, oh God, AK's annoying. Fuego always say, like, You can't hide how he's yeah, feeling. And like, me and Fuego be in like in a position, right? We'd be like at a party or like, at one of the shows, like in the back. And Fuego be looking at me and like, I'll be talking to someone and Fuego come to me afterwards, like, yeah, I know AK don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I can just tell AK's face. Try to get him out of the conversation. I try to get him out of the conversation, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah. I'm not- I can me sometimes I can just look at AK like some guy say something real dumb and real stupid. And me and AK will look at each other and we'll both know that guy did something and said something real stupid. I was like, did you just hear what he said? Yeah. Are you getting the same vibes I'm getting? And it's like, and all it takes is a look, right, AK? Yeah. And we know. And then we go back. Exactly. Yeah. And it's very funny. And I'm very nice too. Like it doesn't. It's not. It's not that. Super nice. It's just. Uh, you've gotten better about it the more you've yeah. grown. You've gotten better at dealing with situations like but that. But I do get taken advantage of. It's been the fun lot. part. It's like sometimes my like over niceness or like try I'm try, my thing is like I'm always trying to keep the peace, you know. I was like, you know what, yeah, maybe I don't like this guy or like we don't really vibe that well, but it's all good, you know. I'm not gonna like scone him or nothing. It's not really that it doesn't go to that extent. It's just like uh it's like I don't I try to keep the peace and also but that also, you know, people take advantage of me because of that. Because I'm I'm not conversational. I don't wanna I don't want to like get in arguments and say no, this is wrong. Like we need to do it this way. Like usually, I'm like, okay, you want to do it this way? Fine. I'm always like, I will say it. I'm like the yes man. People, if I go and does, you know, don't know this. Like, I say yes to a lot of things just because I was like, I don't want to deal with the aftermath. If I say no. Like I was like, just get it. I'm all out. All right, I'm just gonna say yes. Get this over with because I don't want to deal with it. It goes like, uh, what was that? That's a, some homeless man oh came up to God. us. Yeah, we were in Nashville. And, and, uh, this guy gives him. Twenty fucking dollars. I gave him like a buck. AK gave him twenty dollars. I'm like, why? He's like, that's all I had. I just wanted I to get out of my all face. I had on me. <laughs> that's all I had. You could have said no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just... AK made a mistake having a family member in jail, and they called him mm-hmm. asking for money, and AK sent him money, yeah. thinking it would be done, and then the guy just monthly <laughs> thought, okay, now AK's oh in God, the rotation a of a guy. 
I can ask for money. And he would call him over and over. And he'd just be like, this is my freaking family member again. <laughs> ask you for money. Ask oh, God, this new... was like... And it was like a distant relative. It's not like it was like super close to him. He took or, like, advantage. Him out they know who I am. This they dude, know who I say, oh, yeah, this for sure. I'll give you some money. Messaged this guy, told him his baby needed formula, which was a lie, by the way. AK was like, <laughs> all right, here's some money. I'm like, what the fuck? He messaged everybody that. <laughs> Yeah, was, oh, that was Josh Burr, wasn't it? <laughs> Josh Burr? Hell no. No. <laughs> that was Chris Washington. Not Josh Burr. Who was Not it? Josh Burr. Chris, Chris Washington. I, I'm trying to... I'm, Jesus. It was Chris Washington. We're going to bleep <laughs> those names, <laughs> and we're going to end this podcast. Remember, guys, there is a Google Drive down below. You can send in your videos telling us what you what KBW meant to you. What did you like about KBW? How'd you, how'd you feel about KBW? Why you love KBW? Let us know. You can post in the Discord. Or in the Alca, uh, Alca, uh, in the Google Drive and down below. And before we go, Public Google I want Drive, to shout out upload. the difference makers. Uh, Jax Allen, Ash Crimson, the one-eyed God, Birdo34. Um, I don't know. I'm just going off who the usual people. 32. Usual, Birdo32. 32. 32. <laughs> uh, big time. Mike. Really? You don't know him? You were doing well. You were doing well. I'll do it real quick because I, I definitely didn't shout him out at the beginning like I should because we haven't done the podcast in three weeks and so I haven't been uh, up to date on the members. But let me pull them up right now. Uh, we dropped down in members a little bit because again we've been inconsistent, so and, which I understand. But we still have uh, nine difference makers that I do want to shout out, um, and hopefully people resubscribe, knowing that this pod is now out. Uh, Smarties, Michael May, N Y E R O H, Man Ray, Jax Allen, Birdo32, One Eyed God, Ash Crimson, and Big Time Bay Bay. Big Time Mike. Thank you guys so much. Remember to send in the videos. We will post all the other KBW members at the end in the credits. And until next week, thank you for watching. <laughs>